Hope will arise out of the ashes of our past broken relationships, fractured families, and personal struggles. Come walk a mile with me as we allow Jesus to clean out the mess and organize the rest. Welcome to the Bridging Broken to Breakthrough podcast. I am your host, Maria Wingard. Grab your shoes, lace them up as we start strolling through this week's episode. Continuing with the Offendable Me series, this is Recovery Part 1. Staring at a stump for an arm solidifies the truth that I'm now a dead man walking. Surviving a boulder meant to kill you and walking out of the wilderness changes you. Perspective is everything. Quote, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Dead man walking. Quote, God chose to make known the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 The only way to survive the boulder of offense is to die to self by forgiving. The only way to forgive is through Jesus empowering us with his grace. Corey Ten Boom, a Nazi concentration camp survivalist, said it best after encountering her prison guard, who beat her sister mercilessly and shamed both gleefully. Quote, I stood there, I whose sins had every day to be forgiven, and I could not. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply for the asking? It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out. But to me, it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition. That we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. I knew it not only as a commandment of God, but as a daily experience. Since the end of the war, I had a home in Holland for victims of Nazi brutality. Those who were able to forgive their former enemies were able to also return to the outside world and rebuild their lives no matter what the physical scars. Those who nursed their bitterness remained invalids. It was as simple and as horrible as that. Yet I stood there with coldness clutching my heart. Forgiveness is not an emotion. I know that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. End quote. Jesus is the only way. There is no natural way to forgive such atrocities without leaning into the willing embrace of Jesus. Without Jesus, we simply tailor swift things, like her songs Bad Blood and Reputation. Quote, well, when they stop coming for me, I will stop singing to them. You know, people go on and on about like, you have to forgive and forget to move past something. No, you don't. You don't have to forgive and you don't have to forget to move on. You can move on without any of those things happening. You just become indifferent and then you move on. Taylor Swift. (laughs) Frankly, This is quite delusional. She's operating in revenge. She moves on only after extracting a pound of flesh, ensuring without exactly saying names that everyone on the planet knows precisely who she's talking about. It's interesting to assess the popularity of Taylor Swift at a gut level. Most love how she plots revenge for her enemies. She says the quiet part out loud. This is why her revenge songs are wildly popular. She's doing what many never would because they can't afford to burn that many bridges. 
She sings what our unforgiving hearts barely whisper to our minds. A perpetual victim to life and people, continually stroking dead, rotting flesh, held pinned underneath the offending boulder instead of hacking it off to heal. We need to stop wasting our lives keeping pain alive like Swift does in her video, Look What You Made Me Do. Unforgiveness and offense buried alive never dies. It's important to read and believe the Bible when we're in the midst of terrible circumstances. The Bible states that being preoccupied with evildoers leads us into evil. Psalms 37 5 says, Entrust your ways to the Lord, trust him, and he will act on your behalf. Those who wait with hope for the Lord will inherit the land. Do we actually believe this enough to obey? For you see, spending day in and day out consumed by the evil deeds of others is not what we should be doing. If we truly believe the word of God, then we must lay our offense down. Quote, surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not be preoccupied with an evildoer who succeeds in his way. When he carries out his schemes, let go of anger and leave rage behind. Do not be preoccupied. It only leads to evil. Evildoers will be cut off from their inheritance, but those who wait with hope for the Lord will inherit the land. Psalms 37, 7 through 9. I am grateful you decided to walk a mile with me, your host, Maria Wingard, on the Bridging Broken to Breakthrough podcast. I pray that through our conversation, Jesus reveals how he is bridging broken to breakthrough as we stroll through another mile in this journey called life. Hope will arise if you let him in your life today. To listen to past episodes or find out more, please visit hopewillarise.com.